Good morning. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what are perhaps the six most dreaded words in the English language. I'm going to do so through a story about the human brain and a young boy named Julian. Well, first a little bit about the human brain. Robert Frost once said that the human brain is an awesome organ because it starts to work the moment we get up in the morning and it doesn't stop working until we get to the office. All kidding aside, <laughs> the human brain is a masterful organ and it comprises about 2% of our body weight, yet it receives over 20% of our cardiac output. It has over 100 billion neurons in it and also 100 billion astrocytes. We now know through a number of brain mapping procedures that the front part of the brain controls intelligence. At the top, we have motor and sensory. At the back, we have vision. On the side, we have memory and concentration, also language. At the back, again, we have uh, coordination efforts. Over the years, what we've learned about the brain is quite extraordinary when we look at brain imaging. Starting from skull x-rays in the 1900s to cerebral angiography in the 1920s, then going to CT scan and MRI scanning in the 1970s. We can now see the brain with software programs that allow us to visualize the exquisite detail of the human brain. In fact, you can sit in an MRI scanner now, you can tap your toe, and we can identify the toe-tapping region of the brain. In addition, you can speak in an MRI scanner, and the language part of your brain will light up and we can identify that. We can also identify some memories in the brain. So take, for example, a memory like the Toronto Maple Leafs winning the Stanley Cup. Not a good choice. It's been a long time, so it would be a very remote memory, a very small part of your brain that would light up. Well, let's talk about, that's normal brain, let's talk about the uh, situation when the brain malfunctions and what happens to the brain. The brain responds in various stereotypical ways. And I'm listing some of these ways for you here. But basically, you can have seizures, weakness, trauma, uh, tremor, dementia, uh, coordination impairments, and headache. All of us have headaches at some point in our lives. It's not to be concerned. But if you have headaches in conjunction with this finding, which is called papilledema, Papilledema means a telltale sign when a doctor looks through your eyes in the office and sees the retinal background, which is what the backdrop to this slide is. Papilledema informs the doctor that there's raised brain or raised intracranial pressure. So headache in conjunction with papilledema is a problem. It's a major problem and one that we're concerned about. And just for your interest, on the bottom left slide, you can see what the normal retina looks like with a bright yellow sun uh, appearing optic disc in the middle and it's absent in the context of papilledema that you see there. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit now about Julian. So Julian was a young boy, age eight, when I first had an opportunity to uh, meet him at Sick Kids Hospital. He had a very brief history of headaches and vomiting. He also was uncoordinated. And finally, he had that telltale sign of papilledema. So we were concerned. He had an MRI scan that was done at the hospital for sick children and the arrows on the MRI scan point for you to look at a mass lesion that's there that was taking up space causing the pressure and that was a brain tumor. So I had to go and speak to the family and deliver the six most dreaded words in the English language, your child has a brain tumor. And instantaneously, simultaneously, those parents and the child embark on a roller coaster ride almost like no other tremendous number of ups and downs, uncertainties, and challenges that they face along this very long road. The road begins at first with surgery, where a surgeon would remove the tumor, provide specimens that would then go to the pathologist. The pathologist then would make the diagnosis of the tumor, and then other treatments would be embarked upon, including chemotherapy and radiation therapy, depending on what type of uh, a tumor was found. Let's go back now a little bit more about Julian. So Julian had complete removal of his tumor, and that put him in a very good category in terms of his recovery from his tumor. Unfortunately, the bad news was his tumor was called a medulloblastoma, which is a cancer. I think all of us in this room have either met someone, know someone uh, who has had cancer or is going through the ordeal of having cancer. So cancer is a very feared diagnosis. As this uh, video clip depicts, what you see is that cancer exists in our genes, and what happens is that a number of cellular 
responses occur as a result of the DNA damage leading to mutations, metabolism changes, metastasis, invasion, angiogenesis, cancer is a big problem. And we don't have the answer to all cancers that affect the human body. And that is why we're trying to find new ways to treat cancers through research. Many different ways that we're looking at research nowadays, especially with this respect to brain tumors. Here you can see how we're examining brain tumors in the context of molecular biology. But if you take Julian's tumor per se, which was a medulloblastoma, now at our hospital we are examining medulloblastoma according to its DNA alterations, the genomics, to the RNA alterations, which are the transcriptomics, to the protein alterations, which are the proteomics, and now there's epigenomics, which are the add-ons to the uh, typical double DNA-stranded structure that can influence gene expression. And then through functional validations, clinical correlations, and molecular subclassifications, we're now able to treat cancers better than ever before, which is taking us into a whole world of what's known as personalized medicine. Thankfully, the Hospital for Sick Children, as part of the University of Toronto, we have the Arthur and Sonia Labatt Brain Tumor Research Center. Thanks to a very generous donation from famed philanthropists Arthur and Sonia Labatt. It was the first of its kind in Canada. Arguably, it's the largest pediatric uh, brain tumor research center in Canada and, and perhaps in the world. In this particular center now, we have over 100 individuals working on the problem of brain tumors. When I started in 1990, it was me and the bench, basically, but now we have a whole army, as I say, working on this problem of scientists, uh, postdoctoral fellows, uh, master's students, PhD students, research associates, and technicians. But we've also gone beyond our own borders, and we have a continental collaboration with our groups, our colleagues at Duke University in North Carolina and at the University of California, San Francisco. And why is that? That's because none of us is as smart as all of us. And by that I mean through team discovery, through discovery science, through collaborative science, we're able to push the boundaries further as to how we can help patients who have cancer, in particular with uh, brain cancers and brain tumors. Well, as I conclude, I'll just uh, return back to Julian. Uh, this is a photograph of Julian and his family. Julian is standing to the right of his mother who has sunglasses on. Uh, Julian, I met 10 years ago when he was diagnosed with his brain tumor. He's now 18. He's graduated from the Hospital for Sick Children. He's been a survivor of his brain cancer. He's been a tremendous spokesperson for brain tumors and, and raising brain tumor awareness in our society. I have utmost respect for this uh, young man and all that he's been able to achieve and accomplish going through the ordeal that he has been uh, throughout his life. But what is our, our hope for the future? I think our hope for the future is the following, that if we were to deliver these really dreaded words to families, wouldn't it be nice if we could take them off the roller coaster ride? Wouldn't it be nice if we could use six other words that would help them in their anxiety and the ordeal of going through a brain tumor? Wouldn't it be nice if we could say to them, your child has a brain tumor, but it's okay because we can take care of it? Thank you very much.